So augmented reality, people are very curious to, to know what it is and how it works. It's basically an interactive experience where uh, digital components are merged into a live video stream in real time, essentially bringing together the real world with the virtual world. How does it work? Well, we need um, a display, or so that would be a PC or a screen. They, also a PC hosting the total immersion software and a camera. The camera can be a webcam, HD, SD, and then a target. The target can be a 2D or, 2D or a 3D object that is, it could be a, a toy, a game, a DVD, or um, an ad. Once the camera recognizes the target, the product is then super, superimposed and comes to life with augmented reality. And while many think that it's a, a, an emerging technology, it's actually been in practice for about 20 years now. In 1990, Boeing first experimented with augmented reality for maintenance applications. And it actually came into our living rooms in 1998 with the, um, the first downline in, in fo football broadcasting. In 1999, Total Immersion was founded and to bring augmented reality to the mass market. In 2004, markerless tracking was released. That means that no longer was an RFID or barcode necessary, only uh, something that was distinctly recognizable, like a product or a toy or an ad. In 2008, the first consumer accessible product was released. And in 2009, you only needed your browser. So people were able to experience the um, augmented reality and, and, and really explore it just uh, at, at their home PC. And I'm going to give you a demo of that right now uh, for the Night at the Museum, the movie Night at the Museum. They did an, um, a newspaper print campaign where people would find three different versions of ads and actually be able to um, have the characters in the film come to life. Need a little more. And then you're able to watch a trailer. In the world's biggest museum. This is the Smithsonian. This is the big leagues. There are old friends. Good to see you, lad. And new enemies. I am the terrible Napoleon Bonaparte. Al Capone. Gentlemen, I have come back to life. Yeah, no, I heard that. I got that. Welcome back. Make and there's also interactive elements. With it. That was not an example of that, but this was a Disney, Fantasmic Nights, and this allows you to actually interact with the, with the augmented reality. So we've got the Magic Castle behind us, and we're able to now, with keyboard commands, make the dragon roar. <laughs> Fire. And call Tinkerbell to the rescue.
It's summer. So in terms of larger scale events, Nike had just done a, uh, Nike 6.0 was doing the US Open of Surfing and they had a, a Turing kiosk which featured augmented reality, the world's first augmented reality slot machine. So we'll show that in the video. And the Nissan Cube had a really interesting uh, experience also. They had a both out of home and at home uh, campaign where people at trade shows or in retail were able to hold up a brochure and change the color of a car or actually see the interior, change the interior, um, fold back the seats. And they were able to bring that home uh, and do it in, 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 at their PC as well. In terms of themed app, uh, entertainment, there was an interesting experience where the Arizona Sci uh, Science Center developed something called My Digital World, where they, um, with, with Total Immersion, developed the first uh, interactive augmented reality puzzle exhibit. Also, at Six Flags, there's many different applications of augmented reality happening currently and uh, since last summer, where uh, one of the most popular was the Dark Knight ride, where people in the queue would uh, be able to uh, turn into the Joker uh, just by face, face tracking, face recognition. And there are three different areas where we're actually uh, doing uh, gaming with augmented reality. One is, and you'll see examples of these in, in the video to come as well, is, is 3D um, live interactive gaming cards. So it takes a Major League Baseball player, the camera recognizes them, and he actually comes to life on your desktop or in your palm, and you're able to uh, actually play a game pitching, catching, or batting. with their Kia Soul, they just launched the first Facebook uh, application for augmented reality. And um, that is live right now. You can go to facebook.com slash Kia Soul, S-O-U-L, and you'll be able to play that game. It's, it's a, a magnet sticks on your forehead, and you're able to move the hamsters onto the car. And uh, depending on what color jersey the hamster's wearing, changes the color of the car. And, And also in Six Flags, there's a virtual um, augmented reality uh, bumper car uh, multiplayer game. So while we haven't had experience in, in, in directly in gaming other than what you've seen here, we, the platforms that we see are, are kiosks or re either retail or at trade shows, which is a tremendous opportunity. Uh, live events where you can actually make the characters from the games come alive um, uh, it, it, in, in a live, uh, at a trade show or a conference. And consoles themselves, of course, a P, a ma on the computer um, in, in browser-based augmented reality, and um, mobile applications.